the Joe Rogan experience. That's one of the culture shock things for me when I first moved to America. It was that, you know, I think a lot of American kids were told, like, participation trophy culture. Yes. A lot of them were told that they were the best, like, you know, like, Tommy, like, you are, you know, there's Tommy, nothing you can amazing. do. Yeah, you're just, like, so amazing. And I'm like, do these people, it's like American Idol, you know, we used to get the uh, the seasons in Singapore too, and it's like these people can't sing, and that's actually why they're putting them on. They're awful. Yeah. And nobody told them. Like, are you telling me that like they, they've been telling their friends? Oh, I'm practicing. I'm going on American Idol. Did nobody tell them that, bro? Like, you should just be singing in the shower. Nobody well, told them. There's a couple things going on. First of all, some of those people are trolls. They're going on there. They know they suck, and they're going on because they're going to get on TV, and the best way to get on TV is actually to suck. But, American okay, Idol, there's no, there's no concept of shame. Like, they want to do it. They want to be on TV. Look, I used to host Fear Factor. Don't talk to me about shame. Okay, I but understand. there's no shame People in that. There's no shame in attempting to eat bull testicles. Actually, I think right. that's heroic. It's definitely not heroic. And it's now a show on <laughs> Food Network, right? Well, bull testicles are actually a common food. They're yeah, yeah. Rocky Mountain oysters. Gross stuff is. They don't taste bad. Bull testicles do not taste bad. They're actually, they, the way they cook them, if they cook them well, they're actually delicious. Okay, but there's, on, there's, there's no shame in doing something that most people are fearful about. The, the singing thing, what's going on is, first of all, there's a lot of those people that are mentally ill. That's part of the problem. A lot of those people are delusional. They're mentally ill. They have like legitimate mental health issues. And then they go and sing and they sound terrible and no one tells them because they don't have any friends. It's well, one of the reasons why. I think, I think there's a happy medium. See, the thing is, you know, if you grow up in Asia, you're told that you're just a dumbass all the time and you're kind, kind of constantly beat down. You know, if you come home with like 99 over 100 for your math exam, your parents are not going to say, pat, pat, well done. You're, they're going to say, where was that one point? What did you do wrong? Mm. And again, you do not doubt that they love you and care for you. That's just how it is. They're just hardcore. And, and so you kind of internalize that and, and have very low self-esteem and, you know, yeah. in general. Like, but you kind of know your limitations, right? That's the problem. Like when I, when I moved here was that I realized like a lot of the kids I went to school with, man, I wish they had their confidence. You know, it's like yeah. they are – their inflated sense of self-worth was, was just so big. But sometimes it allowed them to get the good jobs. It allowed them to ace the interview. They don't have they to do stupid things like drink this and get nervous. You don't have to do show. that either. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up around a lot of Koreans because I, I did Taekwondo from the mm. time I was uh, young. I did it too for a while. And they are, I mean, I, I thought I knew what hard work was until I was around these people. And I was like, oh, oh you my can never God. outwork, yeah. Koreans, whoo. And uh, my friend Jungsik, who was on the uh, US national team when I was uh, younger, was in medical school. So he was going through his residency and training to be on the national team. So while he was studying, he would put his backpack on, fill his backpack up with books, and run up the stairs of uh, the university, run wow. up and down the stairs to get some uh, additional workouts in. He was trying to train for the U.S. team while he was doing his residency. That's We're saying, It's very insane. Impressive. Insane. He was crazy. He would sleep three hours a night, and he was like one of the best Taekwondo fighters in the world. And uh, it was all through sheer will and determination. But, but he was explaining that to me about what it was like growing up. It's like you are never good. Never, never. There's yep, nothing exactly. ever good enough. You know, no matter what you do, you could have done better. You exactly. could work harder. You could always do more. Yeah. Oof. No, I mean, it's, it's unforgiving. But it's one of those things that it's a good illusion. It's, it's I think, a very healthy illusion to have that, like, work equals success. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and that's why I think, you know, People of Asian descent generally are pretty primed to, to, to buy into the Republican uh, politics, right? right. Of, of pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You don't need handouts. The harder you work, the more likely you're going to achieve something. Um, that's why there's just such a natural, you know, ally in terms of the, as a, they, to rely on this group block as a political group. Well, that's the undiscussed racism in academics is the way Asian people are treated when they're applying for major universities, yeah. particularly for Harvard. Like, they, they literally, you have to score higher if you're Asian. Yeah. Because there's so many Asian people that get in, they made it more difficult, yeah, which is Yeah, trying racist. to manage that. Yeah, I mean... It's it, not a meritocracy anymore. 
Like you've you've decided that they have to do better, right? Than right. white people, they have to do better than everybody else, which is crazy. I think the insidious thing, in particular, about the Harvard case was that they started downgrading Asians on personality. I mean, yes. that's the part. It's like, okay, fine. You you want to say that like maybe you know we don't want uh, we won't we want to like lower the scores a little for other groups and and you know. In, but why? But then to downgrade this personality, that's the part that that bothered me. How did me. they do a, a downgrade personality? What was what was the method that they used to do that? So they said, okay, we're not just going to rely on standardized tests because that's the thing like standardized tests you know they, they're they they the, they can be easily gamed that was the idea that like you can just go for more tuition extra classes and you will do well well we care about the holistic uh package of the applicant right. so we want to see more personality ultimately this is about you know like what aristotle called the telos right T- what is the telos of higher education what's the ultimate goal or essence of higher education? Is it to just produce perfect cogs in the machine of the global economy? Or is it, you know, to produce uh, engaged citizens or whatever it is, right? Like, so however you define that question, what's the purpose of higher education, you could tailor your um, entrance methods to meet that. And in Harvard's case, they decided, well, you know, we're going to, instead of just looking at uh, your GPA, your um, essay. We want to see, want to interview the person, want to see what your personality is like. Can you thrive at Harvard? Are you going to be a good contributing member of of this university? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, this is one of the areas in which consistently it looked like the Asian population that was applying to to Harvard was downgraded in that score. They scored really high when it came to like extracurriculars, academics. They were so strong on on SATs and, and, you know, all these other standardized tests. But when it came to personality, they were very consistently downgraded. So do you think that that characteristic, like the, the seeking out that was, uh, that was applied specifically to try to limit the amount of Asian people? Because that's the argument, right? Um, you know, I, I don't know if it was done specifically for that. But I think Harvard has a – again, b- monocultures suck in general. So – you know, if you're going to, for, even for me, like I, I was coming to, to study in America, like you know, 10,000 miles away, right, from the place I grew up. I don't really want to go to school with a lot of Asians because like I could have just stayed there, frankly. Right. But I, I was looking for, for, for something that wasn't a monoculture. Right. You have to just expand your mind, right? right? So at the end of the day, the issue with Harvard is that it was taking federal money. And if you see Harvard as a stepping stone to a career, to a future, it is unfair, it is kind of unfair if they were penalizing you based on race. That's the hard part right. of proof, right. whether or not this was personality or race or some sort of you know other thing that they were selecting for that happened to correlate with race. That's the part that, that's hard to prove. So is it possible that they were just trying to enhance the way people communicate on campus and so they sort of emphasized personality and emphasized social – Social yeah. interactions, and in doing so, they penalized Asians without being aware of it. Yeah, kind of. I mean, to be to be honest, like you know, when I was in college, I only did my first Jello shot like a couple weeks ago. And a couple weeks ago, now? Yes. Okay. Well, I, I was that typical. Well, you like, don't need to do Jello shots to be in college. I don't know if any. Hey, okay. No. Okay. Not that. You? But Something I didn't. You? I didn't have the typical college experience. You didn't party. I didn't party. Okay. Um, and and I think a lot of you know. A lot of international students who come from Asia will, will probably fall under the same um, habits. Like we're mm-hmm. kind of like, you know, we've been told that there's only one way to succeed, work hard and summa cum laude and all these things. Right. So so a lot of us kind of are, are culturally aligned on that. And, and you know, be, do we contribute to campus in the same way that your active student union leader would who's involved in other curriculars? I don't, you know, I don't know. So would Harvard want... A diversity of, of behaviors and interests. Yeah. Probably yes. You the know, you don't want all these like boring right. STEM people walking But you out. want all kinds of different stuff. Mm-hmm. And you also want people that raise the bar really high in terms of performance. You do. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. that's that that enhances other people's understanding of what's possible. But as a private institution, you right. can you can make your student population up the way you want, right? Yeah. That's why you have what Liberty University, which is Jerry Falwell's, yeah, and it's for Christians. Because, mm-hmm. it, but it's a private institution; they're not taking money from the government, so that's fine. Unlike UC Berkeley, state institution, um, they abolish affirmative action. UCLA, all the UCs did. Look at the population: seventy, eighty percent Asian. 
Interesting. In California. Yeah. Why is that? We, yeah, this is the uncomfortable, you know, this is the part where we just, you know, like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to say, do you? I don't know. Because they kick ass? They work yeah. harder? Yeah. It's, They're more it's, dedicated, more disciplined? People are very uncomfortable to talk about differences in group outcome. Because mm-hmm. we have to kind of make everybody right. the same or else there must be some sort of systematic thing. But I think that Asians, because they're so hardworking and because they don't complain, this, they get, people get away with this stuff where they get away with discrimination against them. I think they're starting to complain. That's now. why the lawsuits yes. were, were filed. So yeah. they are starting to. But it's like it took that. to yeah. like, all right, you fucks. And there's actually quite a big pro-Trump Asian American voting block. Mm. You know, interesting. This 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 particular issue of affirmative action has really driven a lot of Asians rightward. Um, in New York City, that has happened too under De Blasio. Really? Yeah, because of the public school situation there. What's what is the same si- thing? They they want to lower you know they, basically in, in terms of the public high schools. Mm-hmm. Um, they they want to institute the same policies. Affirmative action. Oof. So that's be- that's becoming an issue. 